segment. And now for our weekly news segment. So people oh, can see a face because our camera is pretty lagged. So let people see you. I will be adding Tony oh, so you're right going now. Off of, okay. <laughs> hey guys. So you have someone to talk yeah, to. Yeah, you won't see me, but <laughs> Tony, what's up, man? How you doing? Hey, I'm good, guys. How are you, how are you guys doing? Good, good. Yeah, hanging in there. Hanging Slow, in there. Slowly recovering from the ankle surgery. Yeah. He's a trooper. Oh, yeah. He's a trooper. He's hopping around. Yeah, I know. How was it? It was like a one day surgery and Yeah, it was yeah. like the surgery itself was like, you know, an hour and a half, two hours or whatever. I mean, they put me out, but you know, it's the, it's the recovering. That's the real. Thing. I know. Yeah. <laughs> so I, gotta, I still like have like the dressing from the surgery. So I have to go in a yeah. couple of days and they'll take that off and then they'll put on a boot and yeah. punches. And I can't work from home. Yeah. Even though so the whole world work. worked from home for two years during COVID. <laughs> it was like you can't do it now for like one week until you recover. I worked work for, for, for local government, for municipal government. And, uh, yeah. you know, as everybody knows, governments are backwards. <laughs> <laughs> so if it was the well, private sector, you know, it wouldn't be everybody in the private, like it wouldn't be thinking twice. Like, yeah, sure. Why are we, why are we going to ask you to, to come into work when you can use the internet? Uh, yeah, of course. But yeah. This but is... regardless, you still have one leg, you're kicking ass with the other leg. <laughs> you can't yeah. the other one. So. <laughs> So he's awesome. doing well. He's hopping around everywhere. Yes. It's been fun. Take it away, man. What Take do we got? Away. A lot of news yeah. this week. Share yeah, the screen, my friend. Um, okay, perfect. I'm seeing in the chat uh, Fox Coit, uh, South Padre Tony, Anon is on Twitter. Hey, everybody. It's good to see you. Um, let's get into the news. Uh, the first thing that I want to talk is um, Ethereum's. Um, self-addressed proposal by Vitalik Buterin. We talked about it last week and we looked over the blog, um, but I just want to quickly mention this article from Coindesk. Essentially, um, Vitalik wants to implement self-addresses to Ethereum. He wants to make um, NFTs. He wants to add pri privacy to, to NFTs, to Ethereum name services, domain names. Um, but I'm just curious in the beginning when they developed, when he developed Ethereum, did he not think about privacy and he thought about it only now, or was it a technical difficulty to implement privacy and he was only be, being able to implement it now? That's what I'm thinking. Because these are very smart people and how can you only think about privacy now when it's such an important thing? And um, Tony uh, Varstatter, an Ethereum researcher, who also reviewed uh, Buterin's blog post, said that um, self addresses have great potential to be used in every transaction in which the interaction between two parties should not be revealed to the public. And um, he talked about buying coffee at supermarkets and people not spying on, on what you bought, essentially. Ah, so never, see... never would have thought of that. That's a good idea, Ethereum, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I love that they don't even mention Monero. In the art. Maybe just like mention Monero. Be like, you know, which Monero has been, you know, implemented self addresses, whatever, seven years ago and has been using... But again, like, was it a technical difficulty that they didn't implement privacy in the in the beginning, or did they just not think about privacy at all? Which is concerning because you should think if you're yeah, I think it was privacy. more so the the technical difficulty at the time, right? They were focused on they were making different design decisions. They definitely were not focused on privacy. I think they were well aware of the fact that it lacked it, and uh, yes, you know, the yes. idea they would add it later, which you know we talk about all the time maybe isn't the best strategy if you want your protocol to be private by you know on the protocol level yes but so we'll see maybe they're going to implement it uh we'll see if it's going to have a backdoor what's going to happen with um their implementation and how they're going to do it but um one thing that you can do is you can use monero you can go on cake wallet and you can buy like gobi underscore boy all your groceries for the month with monero and uh, guys, I'm going to show uh, for the people watching on Twitter, I'm going on my Monero wallet app. I'm just going to show for the new people how the um, uh, gift card payment system looks like. I'm not sure if you can see it was just slightly, but there's a bunch of gift cards and you can you can pay at Adidas. You can pay at Chipotle. You can pay at a lot of places uh, using CakePay. You just get uh, the gift card and you're ready to go, which is amazing. So you can basically live off Monero. You have absolutely no ex excuses. 
And uh, it used to be only in the US and now it's in um, Europe too. So that's that's awesome to hear. And people are using it like this person um, on like hardcore. Like, <laughs> it's no joke to use it for well, audio. Want to show it again? Because I was I was playing around with the. Oh yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, yeah sure. Sure. I was yeah. trying to figure out the setting there, but now you're on the spot. Okay. Let's see. Yep. Okay. There we go. There you go. I'm watching on my secondary oh, screen. There you go. Can you see it? Yep. Okay. So there's a lot of them, like a lot of them, guys. Adidas. Uh, you can buy clothes. You can buy food. You can buy a lot of things using using, using Cake Bay. Uh, pizza, Subway, Domino's, like whatever you want. Yeah, no, all, all you need is an email address. Just that. Uh, to, to sign up. You know, you don't need to give any KYC AML. So you can effectively buy these gift cards anonymously and on the spot during ad purchase. And then you could yes. also go on the, on the website as well. And then there you can buy, not through the app yet. I'm sure it'll be, they're working on adding it. But there's additional, I believe, offerings if you do it through the uh, the web app as opposed to through the app. So there's even more <laughs> offerings there, including buying prepaid cards. Yes, prepaid cards. Yep, and you can you can even buy it for out amounts. You can do it for forty two dot fifty nine, or you can do it for you know whatever amount you want. Right, right. Great. But the, like a prepaid Visa, I mean, that that gets you you know gets you pretty Anything. far. Yeah, <laughs> anything like you can live off Monero with Cake Bay. It's crazy. It's, awesome. uh, yeah, someone's asking how can we add more stores to Cake Bay. You can just email them. Um, you know, I'm sure they have a lot. Of, well, know. no, they they use they use an integrated service. So uh, Cake Pay is I forget the company that they're teamed up with. So it's that company that would have to add these uh, other stores. Uh, yeah, they talked about it. There there. <laughs> uh, what's the name of the? I don't know. I forgot, but I, I I know that they, they're using um, some company and they're helping them. I forgot the name of it. But yes, yeah, if, if you just talk party to them. that does it. But yeah, if you have any ideas for yes. yeah, um, I guess reach out to that company. Yeah, that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. send an email and yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's get to the next thing, and we actually have um, a non-shop app in on Twitter. It's good to see you, my friends. Um, this is really amazing. You can essentially uh, purchase anything anywhere in the world using Monero uh, by through this company. And you can even buy uh, camera lenses, like whatever you want, online services, uh, like subs subscriptions to online services, like Netflix and whatever you want, 8, 8K Beamers, importing products, cars, like literally anything you want uh, through this company. And I think you mentioned, Doug, that we we'll, might have them as a guest next week. Uh, to... well, no, wait, which one is this? Scroll up, which which service is this? The one with Anon. Oh, the Anon shop, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, uh, we're talking to them right now, I think. Yeah, that's awesome, right? Yeah, now, speak, yeah, we'll have them, big. Uh, they'll be our special guest next week. Very cool, yeah. They've, I've, they've been around, it looks like, for just a couple it's... of weeks and they're already kind of iterating, so it's very cool. It seems like they're very active and they're, they're trying to find a product market fit and find something that works. Exactly. I think the, the idea in theory is, is is great, right? And it started off, I think the first service they were offering was that they would basically anonymously ship you things to your, your Amazon, right? I think so. Shipping box or whatever they call them. Like, so yes. Yeah. You yeah. Just, just have to give your, your zip code yeah. and they would ship there. But now they've added this concierge service. So very, very cool to see. Yeah. And I, I like the way that they framed it, that you have obtained your XMR securely, KYC free. And now you want oh, no, to wait, this is a different one uh, this is a different yeah one. tony is this a different one i think i don't know this isn't this isn't a non shop this is uh the shop wait oh shopping bit yeah oh wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah so if you click on oh, that sorry so yeah they're they're located in oh, poland so I, I think they're only offering in poland but basically what they oh, allow you to do is uh that you know they have a shop where you can purchase things with monero well now you move to a non shop but <laughs> Um, yeah. Okay. This is okay. This is an on shop. Yep. Sorry. Sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. But that that other service seems pretty interesting too. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. They're they added a concierge service, but I think it's only for Poland. Uh, but in reading it, you know, it's not like completely anonymous. Like they obviously they know who you are. Um, I think. Well, it's like they they do the ordering for you, but if if you read, it, it's like it's just like they're you're trusting them 
So you're ordering through them. They know who you are. Then they go buy it. And then you're just trusting that they, you know, won't reveal who you are. And they say that they're in yeah. every 30 days or whatever, which, you know, cool tip. They've been around for a long time. So very exciting to see because I think they're originally just Bitcoin based. Now they've added Monero. But yeah, Anon Shop, different yes. concept, just Monero based. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that started with this offering of just anonymously shipping to uh, your Amazon box um you know those things are like located in like whole foods and stuff so you would just give your your zip code and it ships there they don't know who you are yeah. other than the zip code you're asking to ship to and then you go pick it up but now they added this concierge service which is pretty cool i don't know if anybody's tried it out yet uh but i love the concept these are certainly things i've thought of uh do, you know but yeah you know, uh, I think a lot of people uh, have ideas in the space, and this is just a perfect example of just run with it. You know, put up a minimal viable product, get it going, see if you can make it work. Yeah, That's absolutely. Cool. And actually, someone purchased a Google Pixel Six on the website on an on shop, um, PlayStation Five, an SSD. Uh, so I'm happy that people are using it, and it's a beautiful website as well. And um, it's exciting. I'm excited to to them hopping on the show uh, next time. Yeah, kudos to them. Good luck. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be awesome. Uh, so let's talk about more bomb news. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. So someone tried to get uh, an ant miner for the people um, on Twitter. I'm showing an image of uh, an S9. That's an um, an ASIC for Bitcoin. And um, someone tried to get it through airport security and flying with it. And it's kind of dusty and has some dirt. So I assume it looks like a bomb that was pulled from the ground and has a fan on it. and. <laughs> <laughs> they're trying to run away with it uh the person that actually um was able to fly with it uh but then we have uh jan nicolescu that tweeted that he just came back from romania and he managed to smuggle two monera miners which is a cpu <laughs> the cpu nobody's gonna ask anything because it doesn't look like his phone <laughs> his smartphone yeah. and his cpu i mean it's just so funny right like just shows you another another way in which monero is obfuscated right so even even yes. the equipment that's used to mine it uh, there's no way of determining whether or not you have it, right? It's like, oh, it's just that's just my computer. Yeah, you can just which say it's for sounds, gaming. It's which for sounds work. absurd, but you know, it's it's just an added layer of security. Anybody anywhere with the CPU can can opt can opt in uh, permission without permission to start mining Monero and travel with their mining equipment, and they wouldn't be noticed as exactly a, as a miner. Exactly. And if the if if they let this guy travel with the S9, I think they should let me travel with the mural. <laughs> no, we'll... let's, let's not get into that. The mural. We're not going to get into that. that just no, let's not. Yeah, we're not going to get into that. Um, but let's, I'm going to play the first minute of, um, for the people. On, Unless, on... Wait, hold on. I'll put it out there right now. Unless oh somebody oh. wants to drive that mural up to, up to our house in New York <laughs> from Miami. I think <laughs> on, right, we were getting replies for $1,000. So it, for every you'd have to be able to you know beat that price of a thousand dollars and pay in a Monero. Uh you include you have to go rent rent the truck. Maybe you have one. You fit in a van. You fit in a van. <laughs> a van. And then you have to drive it up <laughs> from Miami to New York. Hey, it could be a way to I don't know how much profit you make after gas and all that stuff, but it could be a fun adventure. Just throwing it out there. And then we'll we'll have you on the show as you arrive. <laughs> we'll have you, you'll be our special guest on Monerotopia. <laughs> All sweaty, tired. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All righty. So you wanna? Yep. Play the video. This is. Oh yes, uh, but it's not. Is it showing? Yes, yes, it is showing now. Okay, I'm gonna show the first minute. Um. So this is, um, Jordan Walker. I think his name is Pfizer director, and he talks about mutating COVID-19 virus for new vaccines, essentially. So let's watch the first 30 seconds to one minute of that. This Pfizer is ultimately is thinking about mutating COVID? Well, that's not what we say to the public. No. Don't tell anyone this going You gotta publish your own You gotta publish your own We're exploring, like, now, you know how the virus keeps mutating? Yeah. Well, one of the things we're exploring is, like, why don't we just mutate it ourselves so we can talk about identically developed new vaccines, right? So we have to do that. If we're gonna do that, though, there's a risk of, like, as you could imagine, no one wants to be having a pharma company mutating viruses. We'd be, like, very controlled to make 
sure that this virus that you mutate doesn't create something like, you know, it's those everywhere. So it's it's crazy. Bad. It's the way that the virus is moving on. To be honest, like, it's, it makes no sense that this virus popped out of nowhere. Like, yeah, so I know. Awesome. Meet Jordan Tristan Walker. Yep. So this was the video. It's insane. I'm not even sure how it was filmed. They maybe must have had <laughs> like a pen with a, the guy must have had a pen with a camera and he had it in his, uh, Shirt pocket. Yeah, I'd be curious. Like, how did yeah. he gain his trust and everything? It is like how was this he, release? He was talking like he was talking to a you know kind like of a, a friend. friend. Yeah, he was just friend. Like, hey, yeah. Just, we're both drunk. Just tell me what you do in your business. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but I guess yeah. I don't know. But this is insane. That the fact that he said that he wants to, you know, they would mutate COVID nineteen virus for new vaccines. Uh, What's insane is you still have idiots out there, sheep that are gonna, you know watch yeah. this yeah and still still kind of be in disbelief and think that you know there were there nothing there was no wrong that happened uh they you know the pharmaceutical companies are on on our side the, the state's looking out for our best interests and that's that's the scary part right is that even with this evidence like right in our face you're still gonna have those that are gonna ignore this and be like no uh you know they they were looking out for our best interests, which yes. is is just wild. I mean, it's it's all all of like kind of all of our our worst conspiracy theories are, are <laughs> coming true, right? It's before our right. eyes. It's insane. And the way he's just saying it so casually, like it's nothing. Oh yeah, we're gonna mutate it and whatever. I'm like new vaccines. It's and he's laughing about it. So yeah, really he's basically talk. saying how they're admitting how they're doing gain of function research saying oh, you know look, this maybe this is probably what happened uh how covid got out in the first place in wuhan and actually we're doing the same thing over here i hope it doesn't happen again uh yeah. and, you know it's just it's just showing that there really is no moral compass and why should there be i mean this is how it works you know this, this is you have this large mega company uh with infinite power infinite money that has its you know tentacles into the, the government you know the regulatory bodies that are supposed to regulate them there's complete yes. regulatory capture there and all the you know regulations and rules that they're creating are just going to be benefiting these companies and perpetuating things forward which is actually analogous we had this week we had uh we did a show on uh what is it called the bitcoin fog so it was pretty yes. interesting yeah. so bitcoin fog is a mixer from like 2013 you know centralized and they recently accused this guy roman of being the one who runs it whether or not he was or not i mean we had we had the his attorneys on and they're you know they're pretty steadfast in saying that he's innocent and that they were basically incorrect you know uh using chain analysis to accuse him of this crime when there really wasn't any hard evidence that connected him and where the story really gets interesting is that it could be the first time that chain analytics is is on trial for the first time as to you know what what precedent gets set there in terms of you know what can be used in a court of law to prove if somebody uh is to prove somebody is, is or isn't part of a crime via cryptocurrency using chain analytics mm -hmm. and they, they just you know tor is is the name of the 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 attorney um He's just, you know, kind of gotten on this rabbit hole and is realizing how corrupt the chain analytics industry is and how analogous to this, they're basically tied into the regulators. You know, Arctic Mine kind of talks about this a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's the way the ecosystem works is the chain analytics companies have an incentive to uh, influence the regular regulators, right? <laughs> And then the regulators are incentivized to, to listen to what the chain analytics companies want them to do. Because a lot of these guys that work in regulation then end up going and getting jobs for these companies on the outside. So you saw you see that with the pharmaceutical companies, right? But now you're seeing that with things like chain analytics. So these same guys that are the insiders that are, you know, uh, public servants that are the regulators that are making the rules, determining, you know, what regulations, KYC, AML, whatever it is. Uh, banking regulations that need to new banking regulations that need to come down with regards to crypto. Uh, they're being, you know, the, it's the, the these 
crypto uh, tracing companies that are whispering in their ears, telling them what the regulation sh should be. And then what ends up happening? They end up going and getting these big, cushy jobs with these chain analytics companies, which become multi, multi, you know, uh, billion dollar companies, if not already. I mean, they're on their way. Uh, it, but it's literally the same exact type of system that we're seeing in place that happened with the pharmaceutical companies. Mm -hmm, exactly. And actually, since you mentioned this, I really want to talk about the article that you sent me before. Uh, I want to se segue it into um, the article with the crypto AG. Oh, that yeah, it's wild. Yeah, let's talk about this for a little bit, because this is wild, wild, wild. Um, so what if Bitcoin's roots extend back over 80 years prior to the origins of the U.S. security state? This is the story of Bitcoin, the NSA and the crypto AG. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to mention a couple of things. But the story goes back to 1892 uh, to uh, Boris C Caesar, Wilhelm Hegelin. And then um, essentially, uh, if we go scroll down, he developed a crypto AG machine, which was it's kind of like an Enigma machine, which has um, rotor based cipher machines to encrypt messages. And um, the conclusion of the story is that the CIA um was paying close attention to this machine and they wanted to backdoor it they saw potential they, in using they, the machine they did i think there was pretty hard evidence they eventually that they, they they bought out essentially took control of the company in some some back backdoor way uh eventually completely took it over and they you know mandated what you know who they could sell these machines to right yes uh, yeah. and they even they they even uh, change the the instructions that went along with the machine like they they recommended that certain things be done uh for certain countries using the machine which basically al gave them allowed them better access um to you know uh a, you know spying into the messages that were being sent back and forth and yeah really where the thread ends up going so it starts with that that long history of of showing that you know the CIA, the NSA, they've done this before, right? They've taken mm -hmm. these, we've, we've seen it. We've seen it with the Snowden uh, leaks, right? Yes. There's no question, right? We know that that's what these huge, powerful state governments are in the business of doing. Um, so he goes and he writes a story and he proves that it's been done before and then kind of weaves it into to Bitcoin and crypto and questioning, you know, at this point it's conspiratorial, whether or not it's it's happened again with something like Bitcoin. Obviously people have mentioned that, right? Just conspiracies with Bitcoin created by the NSA, the CIA. Um, and who knows, who knows? But he, what he's really talking about is the uh, elliptic curve that Bitcoin uses that uh, it, it's based on. And talk, and they're you know showing kind of the the trail of evidence as to why it may not be so far fetched to believe that there is a potentially a backdoor in the ECC that Bitcoin uses, uh, and he points out, you know, who was uh, you know the creator or, or partook in creating it, and how that person had created. Uh, other, you know, elective curves that were proven to have had a backdoor put into them. Uh, mm -hmm. And there's no hard evidence that there is one in Bitcoin. But, you know, it's it's just interesting. And I think really what the main point or takeaway is, is the tweet that I had put out with regards to this is that for those that are in Bitcoin that are maxis, um, to ignore this is is ridiculous right to ignore monero in the first place has always been ridiculous mm -hmm. but i think it's just an additional reason to look at monero and fluffy pony had had always said this as well you know that maybe the the best way to look at monero is a hedge the ultimate hedge to bitcoin right mm -hmm. so monero uh bitcoin is capped monero has a tail emission uh you know Bitcoin is mined by ASICs. Monero is mined by CPUs. Mm -hmm. Bitcoin has fixed blocks. Moneros are dynamic. But you know, Bitcoin is is fundamentally transparent on the protocol layer. Monero is private, and then even the the um, the encryption that they're based on are fundamentally different. And Bitcoin is using uh, this elliptic curve that you know could potentially have been backdoored uh whereas monero is using one where you know i'm not i'm not wise on on all this enough to say but the 
from what I'm researching, is there's a less chance that this would have been a backdoored, uh, you know, uh, curve. And mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm hoping to do a show on that, actually. If anybody knows somebody good to talk about where we can mm -hmm. really get some strong insight into how these, uh, you know, basically curves were developed and whether or not we should have more trust in one or the other. Uh, but it's, it's just really interesting stuff. And if nothing more, I think it's just additional evidence as to why people should look at Monero as perhaps being the, the, the best hedge to, to Bitcoin for these reasons. Yes. And you, and you should doubt these technologies because countries invest millions in crypto AGs and they believe that they were getting trustworthy technology from Switzerland, uh, but they were actually being spied by, by the CIA for the past five decades. And that's 148 countries. And the U.S. was worried about uh, the USSR and other countries spying, but they were the ones spying the whole globe for five decades. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty yeah, pretty so. certain the guy who wrote this thread because I did reach out to him. I asked him if he'd come on the show. Uh, he said he he can't do anything like that right now. But I'm pretty sure he might sh take the same opinion of Monero itself. Mm -hmm. I would say, oh, I think I think in general he thinks all crypto is potentially kind of like backdoored. Yes, uh, yeah, and, yeah. you know, but. I don't know. I don't know if that, uh, you know, I don't know if there's, if I think there's hope, you know, I think there's perhaps there were, uh, you know, really smart crypto guys that on their own in an open source way cr created things that we can, we can right. trust, but you know, I'm not intelligent enough to, to know that, but I, I would love to find somebody who can speak about that intelligently. Right. Right. Okay, um, now let's talk about uh, Norway, uh, CBDC, and sorry, central banks, CBDC. Uh, Norway has been working on CBDC since 2016, so for a long time, uh, when it was one of the first countries to even work on it. And But we are raising privacy questions to their CBDC product because um, essentially they want to heavily regulate it, KYC it, and... The article talks about many fintech companies moving to um, places like Switzerland or outside because um, it just not, it's just not a viable place for a business. Um, they do have lower energy costs, uh, free education, but the tax burden is, is so high. And then um, we have a quote in the article that says the Norwegian Central Bank CBDC project can also pose a threat to the legal status of private stable coins in the country. The introduction of a CBDC may prompt increased regulation and oversight in private stable coins, making it harder of these companies to operate. Um, and then uh, they will force uh, KYC. They um, essentially don't want you to have privacy. Um, and then we have the last uh, sentence that says that the CBDC of Norway will not only offer less privacy for a single customer, but at the same time, less public transparency with regard to, to blockchain. Um, so they'll have their CBDC. Uh, Nordic countries are heavily investing in um, cashless solutions, and it's not going to be the one in which you're going to have your own privacy. And, you know, like it's going to be transparent to them, and they'll have their own privacy, most likely. Um, so Norway is heavily going into it. Um, Saudi Central Bank is still researching CBDC, although they have done, they have had projects in the past, and um, the project's name is called Project Abra in 2019. And the report said that there was a significant improvement over centralized payment systems in terms of architectural or architect architectural resilience. Um, so they've done tests in the past with CBDCs. They have found positive. Um, effects that it would have over the economy. Uh, but I guess they're still <laughs> thinking about um, deploying one or, well, but ultimately I think that they, they will because the whole world is going to. Yeah, everybody, everybody's it. moving towards it. If you go back to the Norway one for, for a second, what, what I yes. thought was, was kind of funny about is, you know, you have this bank, If you, there was a quote there and it was one of the, the banks talking about how, um, this Today one. there's 50 million krona in circulation. Uh, I can't remember. Oh, and Norges Bank can only count for 40 percent of its use. This means that 60 percent of money usage is outside of any control. So they're concerned about that cash. They don't like the idea of cash because you know you can okay. use it in, in in ways that they can't see. Uh, and then the bank, the 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 same bank goes on to say how they like they're okay with 
ex accepting Bitcoin and selling Bitcoin, right? By KYC ML. So showing that the banks aren't, they're not concerned about Bitcoin, right? Yes. They're concerned about cash because you can't see it. You can't see how people are using it. But they're also, that same bank is also not concerned about Bitcoin, obviously, because they offer like the sale of Bitcoin. Um, and then they also want to make a CBDC. So it just kind of shows you that banks really aren't concerned about all crypto. They're not concerned about Bitcoin. Right. Uh, and they, 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 don't, they don't, you know, they, they don't like the idea of, of cash. They don't like the idea of true digital cash. Right. So and then trust that they're going to make a CBDC that has cash like, you know, features is why there'd be absolutely no reason to trust them when literally they're saying the reason they want to create a CBDC is because cash can't be tracked and traced. Exactly. So exactly. That would instill privacy. Exactly. Trust and this uh, this article also talks about uh, banks in the, in the past um, slowly not accepting cash. And I think only a bank in Oslo was accepting cash at some point and the rest major banks were just rejecting cash. So they definitely want to go uh, cashless crazy. and um, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, but let's go back into, let's go back into Monero. We finished CBDCs for this week. Um, let's talk about a fast desktop point of sale app. And there's actually two projects that I want to mention within this post. One called Lumo, which is Esperanto for light. I like that uh, the person used Esperanto because Monero is also, is also in Esperanto and it means money. And Lumo is essentially a self-hosted, a semi-transparent and auditable Monero wallet. It's for donations and charity purposes so that you can, um, the, the donor is protected, but then... Um, yeah, this, yeah. Is, this, is, this is very cool. Yeah, basically turns yeah. Monero into, into Bitcoin <laughs> for when you need it. Which yeah, is, like a Bitcoin Bitcoin esque kind of yeah. yeah. So maybe yeah. maybe we, you know once it comes a little further along, we could implement be one of the first users of this with gratuitous. Could be a yes. good uh, use case. Yes. Absolutely, yes. And then they also have a project called um Casejo, Caseo, uh, I think Caseo, most probably, if it's in Esperanto. Uh it means cash desk checkout. And it's an open source uh, point of sale app for receiving and tracking Monero sales and payments in in person. And here's the website for the people watching on Twitter. Um, you can go to ksejo.com. It's a beautiful, simplistic website. And it's open source. And it's so, not ready yet, though, right? Because I know he's been talking about it for a long time. Um, no. Right? Um, right. Development is still going on. No, it's not ready yet. No. So it's still under yeah, development. We definitely have to have him on at some point. I know he's been talking about this for a while now. <laughs> yeah, so for sure. There's progress being made. For sure. Yep. And then the last thing that I want to mention is um, someone that I fought. <laughs> was actually, <laughs> hey, Monero, uh, Monero Chan, Monero Bro, Monerista. And um, he tweeted Monero. And it, it really depends on how you read it because many people thought that this is a Monero person. Monero, it runs the dark web but I just use it to buy groceries. <laughs> or you can say um, it runs the dark web. Yes, of course, but I just use it to buy groceries, which means that yes, it does power the dark web. People use it for those nefarious activities, but I use it to buy groceries. So it depends on your use case. But I, he meant it in the way that it runs the dark web. Criminals are using it, but I'm just using it to buy groceries. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> you can't possibly be using Monero in a non, you know, illegal way, is what he was suggesting. Which it's exactly. just like, look at this guy. Like his account, right? If you zoom in, John W. If you go through his tweets, like he acts all hard and like he's like this super tough, hard, anonymous dude. And then like, he just says this, like this most boot state boot licking thing possible right like it, so he he's opposed to a crypto that could be could potentially be used for criminal purposes is that is that essentially what he's saying like i, I don't understand this per i don't understand this person you know and he's a he's a big he's a big btc maxi so like what is he what does he believe in it's just that just that it's limp bitcoin is limited so it's going to go up in value so he doesn't let like this this character in in Bitcoin <laughs> land frustrates me to the to the tenth degree, and like they act like they're these like tough cypherpunk individuals that yeah. are like out there like like hoping for the revolution or something. And meanwhile, they're not okay with the fact that 
something like Monero might be used for criminal things and suggesting, well, it was just built for those purposes. And if it's used for those purposes, that means it's only used for those purposes, which is completely ridiculous. I mean, it's the ridiculous. first use case of Bitcoin was for dark market purposes. That's when people first got excited about it because they're like, wow, look, here's something that you weren't able to do before Bitcoin, right? It proved the use case. You weren't, you can't, you couldn't set up a dark market with Visa or Venmo. It would be impossible or PayPal. And now with this tech, you were able to set that up and approve that it did something that these other things couldn't do. And now it's also proven that actually it didn't do that well, right? As people are mm -hmm. still getting caught. Like we saw, you know, with this, the guest we just had with the BTC mixer from 2013, people still getting caught from using that from 2013. Crazy, crazy. And here this, this yeah. guy is, is like pointing it out try, and trying to insult Monero people and, you know, and suggest that this <laughs> law of, of Bitcoin. It's, I mean, uh, of Monero, right? It's, it's, it's ridiculous. I don't know. But if you do find it funny, you can buy a t-shirt. <laughs> uh, it's going to be on gratuitous.org. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, for the people watching on Twitter, uh, Doug made a picture of uh, a <laughs> the Monero logo, and it says it runs the dark web and underneath the Monero logo, but I just use it to buy groceries. And then <laughs> uh, of the person. <laughs> I realize you're an artist. I mean, it took me about two minutes. Oh, no, I realized that's why you use Cam. <laughs> Izzy asked me. No, I use one of those like t shirt creator things. Oh, okay. Like, yeah, yeah. One up look. Um, yeah, but maybe we should we'll have this as the general out. admission uh, t shirts. If you don't have one, you can enter. Like we had the, uh, what do we have last year? The circular things, the little uh, the buttons, pins, the buttons. Yeah, we should yeah. have this. And if you don't have this T-shirt on, you can't enter the, the <laughs> no, conference. We could, we could make this That's the Monero actually not terrible, yeah. swag. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> I invited the guy to the conference. I said, "Ticket, ticket on me if you want to come." Thank you for the amazing, you know, amazing creative idea for how to market Monero. <laughs> yeah, honestly, but I don't know. You should be open to all technologies, even if you don't agree with. You know some things but it does like one more thing that i'll mention and that, that'll be it for this week um if you go on monero it doesn't say on the white paper it was made for dark web only use it for dark web if you want to buy groceries you can but you just use it for dark web it doesn't say that you know yes so just awesome. that's it for this week uh, guys uh the links are in the description thank you so much for joining us and um we'll see you awesome. next time all right thank, thank you, you tony you're the bomb <laughs> have a good one Cheers. adios you too. All right.